Peroxide cross-linking of rubber is fascinating, but have you ever wondered what is the mechanism behind it? Or the types of polymers that work best with this method and what you need to add or to avoid to make this process successful? Hello, my rubber hearts. Welcome back to another episode where we continue our deep dive into the science of rubber. Today, we are focusing on a crucial technique in the rubber industry, vulcanization with peroxides. Whether you are a rubber professional or just curious about how rubber products get their toughness, flexibility and heat resistance, this episode will walk you through the process from the chemical reaction to the practical application explained for everyone to understand. First, let's quickly talk about what vulcanization is. In simple terms, vulcanization is the process of chemically bonding polymer chains together to make rubber stronger, more durable, and more heat resistant. While traditional vulcanization is done with sulfur, today we are focusing on a different method. Peroxide vulcanization uses chemicals known as organic peroxides to create the crosslinks in the rubber matrix. These peroxides are heat activated and break down into free radicals, which then form chemical bonds between the polymer chains creating a three-dimensional network that strengthens the rubber. Not all rubbers respond equally well to peroxide cross-linking. Here are the most common polymers that are cross-linked using peroxides. Ethylene propylene diene monomer is one of the most commonly cross-linked rubbers with peroxide due to its heat resistance and excellent weathering properties. EPDM is used in automotive seals, hoses, and weather stripping. Silicon rubber crosslinks well with peroxides and is known for its thermal stability and flexibility over a wide temperature range. This makes it great for applications like medical devices, gaskets, and seals. Nitride butadiene rubber crosslinked with peroxide provides good oil and chemical resistance and is used in fuel hoses, seals, and gaskets in the automotive and industrial sectors. Ethylene vinyl acetate is commonly used in applications like foams, where peroxide crosslinking improves flexibility and toughness. While these are the primary polymers, other like natural rubber and SBR can also be crosslinked with peroxides under the right conditions though they are more commonly vulcanized with sulfur. For peroxide vulcanization to be effective, you need more than just rubber and peroxide. Here are the key components to consider in the rubber formulation. The peroxide itself is, of course, essential. The most common peroxides used are decumyl peroxide, or DCP, and benzoyl peroxide. They release free radicals at high temperatures, typically between 140 to 180 degrees, initiating the cross-linking reaction. Coagents are often added to the formulation to boost the efficiency of cross-linking. These are chemicals that help the free radicals form stronger, more uniform bonds between the polymer chains. Some common agents are TMP, TMA, which is trimethylolpropane, trimethacrylate, and TAIC, or trialyl isocyanurate. To protect the polymer during processing and later in its service life, stabilizers like antioxidants are included in the formulation. This prevents the rubber from degrading due to oxygen or UV exposure. While peroxide cross-linking is versatile, certain additives can disrupt the process, preventing the rubber from curing properly. Since peroxide vulcanization doesn't use sulfur, you should avoid adding sulfur-based curatives to the formulation. Sulfur can react with the free radicals generated by the peroxide, inhibiting the cross-linking reaction. Fillers like carbon black and silica can be used, but care must be taken to avoid fillers with acidic or basic properties. Acidic fillers can cause peroxide to degrade too quickly, while basic fillers can neutralize the free radicals, preventing effective crosslinking. Plasticizer or processing oils, especially those with high polarity, can in fact disrupt the peroxide crosslinking process. 
Non-polar or inert oils like paraffinic oils are often a safer choice for these formulations. Now, let's take a closer look at the types of peroxides used in rubber cross-linking. Different peroxides have different decomposition temperatures, which means they break down and release free radicals at different points during the vulcanization process. Here are the most commonly used peroxides and their properties. Decumyl peroxide, or DCP, has a decomposition temperature between 140 and 170 degrees C. It is one of the most widely used peroxides for cross-linking rubber. It is especially effective with EPDM, EVA, and NBR. DCP releases free radicals at moderate temperatures and gives good mechanical properties to the final product. Benzoyl peroxide, or BPO, has a decomposition temperature of 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. BPO breaks down at lower temperatures than DCP and is often used for applications where lower curing temperatures are needed. It is commonly used in foams and for cross-linking silicone rubbers. DBPH has a decomposition temperature between 170 and 180 uh, Celsius. This peroxide has a high decomposition temperature and is used for rubbers that need higher processing temperatures, such as high-performance EPDM and fluoroelastomers. DTBP has a decomposition temperature in between 150 and 170 Celsius. DTBP is another high-temperature peroxide, known for its high stability and effectiveness in cross-linking EPDM and other synthetic rubbers. It is often used in automotive and industrial applications. Understanding the breakdown temperature of a peroxide is important because it needs to match the processing temperature of the polymer. If the peroxide breaks down too early or too late, the cross-linking reaction will not happen as efficiently, leading to poor performance. Now, let's dive into the chemical reaction that occurs during the peroxide vulcanization. When rubber is heated, the organic peroxide breaks down and forms free radicals. These free radicals are highly reactive and attack the polymer chains, causing a chemical bond or crosslink to form between two chains. The result is a three-dimensional network of polymer chains that give the rubber its final properties like strength, heat resistance, and elasticity. Imagine the rubber chains are like strands of spaghetti, all slippery and sliding past one another. When you heat them up and add peroxide, it's like using glue to stick the strands together at different points. The more points of contact, the stronger and more resilient the rubber becomes. Yes, different polymers react differently to peroxide vulcanization depending on their chemical structure. For example, EPDM has unsaturated sites in its backbone, which allows free radicals to easily form crosslinks. However, its main structure is saturated, which means it doesn't react with sulfur very well, making it ideal for peroxide vulcanization. In NBR, the nitrile groups are polar, which can interfere slightly with the free radical process. But when formulated properly with the right coagents, peroxide vulcanization gives excellent chemical and oil resistance. Silicon polymers have a silicon oxygen backbone which makes them react easily with free radicals. This gives silicone rubber excellent heat resistance and flexibility, even at extreme temperatures. So, different polymers need slightly different formulations for peroxide vulcanization to work optimally. But the core chemistry remains the same, creating free radicals to bond the polymer chains together. You might be wondering why choose peroxide vulcanization over sulfur. Here are a few reasons. Rubber compounds crossing with peroxides typically have better heat resistance than sulfur-cured compounds, making them ideal for high-temperature applications like automotive seals and hoses. Peroxide crosslinking gives rubbers lower compression set, which means they return to their original shape better after being compressed. No sulfur bloom as sulfur-cured rubbers can sometimes develop a bloom, which is a powdery residue on the surface. This doesn't happen with peroxide crossing rubbers, making them cleaner 
and more stable. And that's the scoop on peroxide volcanization. Whether you are working with EPDM, NBR, or silicone rubber, knowing how peroxide cross-linking works and what to include or avoid in the formulation is crucial for creating high-performance rubber products. Peroxide vulcanization offers a unique way to improve heat resistance, compression set, and overall durability of rubber, making it a go-to method in many industries. If you found this episode helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the science of rubber. Stay bouncy, my rubber hearts, and I will see you in the next video.